Alright, welcome back to the part 50. So, um, hey, so, um, previously on this, uh, after I said, uh, look, Hall said, and I, I'm gonna continue with, <clears throat> I'm gonna continue with this, uh, story, this will be pretty done, I promise, even though it's not, even though it's 12, has like 12 pages, so, okay, so I'm gonna try to finish it today, so, Looking forward to reading more stories, um, so you guys can learn from your uh, English teacher, so I can like, help you out. If you guys didn't remember the story that was taking place, you can you have the right, you are in the right place. This is what I'm reading right now. So, yeah, there was a rusty lock bolted on the underside, now broken. It shouldn't be underneath. Warwick said, "It should be on the top." Why? A lot of the reasons. Paul said, maybe so nothing on the side, on this side, could open it, at least when the lock was new. Maybe so nothing that on that side could get up. <clears throat> Pardon me. Who locked it? Wiskinski asked. Ah, uh, Hall said mockingly. Ah, uh, Hall said mockingly, looking at Warwick. A mystery. Listen, Brad, she whispered. Brachi whispered. Oh, God. Wiskinski sobbed. I ain't going down there. It was a soft sound, almost expected. The whisk and powder of thousands of paws, the squeaking of rats. Could be frogs, Warlick said. Hall laughed aloud. Warlick showed his light down. A sagging flight with wooden stairs led down to the black stones of the floor beneath. There was not a rat in sight. Those stairs won't hold us, Warlock said with finality. Finality. Brachu took two steps forward and jumped up and down on the first step. It creaked but showed no sign of giving away. I didn't ask you that, Warlock said. We weren't there when they when that rat bit Ray, Brachu said softly. Let's go, Hall said. Warlock took a last sardonic look around the circle of men, then walked to the edge with Hall. Wiskinski stepped re reluct reluctantly between them. They went down one at a time. Hall, then Wiskinski, then Warwick. This their, their flashlight beams played over the floor, which was twisted and heaved into a hundred crazy hills and valleys. The, the, the host bumped along behind Wiskinski like a clumsy separant. When he got to the end to the bottom, <clears throat> pardon me, Warlick flushed his light around. It picked out a few rotting boxes, some barrels, little else. The seep from the river stood the puddles that came to ankle depth on their boots. I don't hear them anymore, Wiskinski whispered. They locked slowly away from a trapdoor, their, free, their, their feet shuffling through the slime. Hall paused and shone his light on a huge wooden box with white letters on it. Elias Varney, he read, 1841. Was the mill there here then? No, Warlick said. It wasn't built until 198. Sorry. It wasn't built until 1897. What difference? <laughs> <clears throat> Hall didn't answer. They locked Ford again. Subcellar was longer than it should have been, and it seemed. The stench was stronger, the smell of decay and rye and things buried, and still the only sound was <clears throat> that faint, cave like drip of water. <clears throat> Take a picture of look this right here. There's a skeleton, there's a rat on the skeleton's skull. Pole, because Winskinski is from the country Poland, the narrative calls him a pole. Elias Varney, no no exact reference exists for this allusion, <sighs> yet it is similar to the first English language vampire story ever published, called 
Barney the Vampire were a feast of blood, a serialized gothic horror that the first appeared in 1845 to 1847 as a series of weekly cheap pamphlets they known as Penny Dreadfuls. <coughs> My fault. What's that? Hall asked, pointing his beam at a jut of concrete that protruded. Perhaps two feet into a cellar, beyond it, the darkness continued and it seemed to Hall that he could now hear sounds of their, their curiously stealthy. Warlock peered at it. It's, no, that can't be right. Out of while the mill, isn't it? And up ahead, I'm going back, Warlock said, suddenly turned around. Hall grabbed his neck roughly. You're not going anywhere, Mr. Foreman. Warlock looked up at him, his grin cutting the darkness. You crazy college boy, isn't that right? Crazy as a loon, you shouldn't push people, friend. Keep going. What's going to mood? Hall. Give me that. Hall grabbed the hose. He let go of Warwick's neck and pointed the hose at his, at his head. Wiskinski turned ab abruptly and crashed back towards the trap door. Hall did not even turn after you. After you, Mr. Foreman. Warwick stepped forward. Walking out of his place, where the mill ended above them, Hall flashed his light about and felt a cold satisfaction. What am I saying? Hall flashed his light about and felt a cold satisfaction. A premonition fulfilled. The rats had closed in around them, silent as death, crowded in, rank on rank. Thousands of eyes looked greedily back at him. It ranks to the wall, some <coughs> fully as high as a man's chin. Harlick set saw, then a moment later, and came to a full stop. They were all around us, college boy. His voice was still calm, still controlled, but his held a jagged edge. Yes, Hall said. Keep going. They walked forward, and the hose dragging it right behind. The hose can be dragging around. Hall looked back, and once saw the rats heads closed, the easel behind them. They were gnawing a heavy canvas hosing. One looked up and almost seemed to grin at him before lowering his head again. He, he could see his bats now. Two, there were roots sting. The rough hound overhead's huge, the size of crowds are rooks. Look, Warlick said, centering his beam about five feet ahead, a skull, green with a mold, laughed up with them. Further out on hall, could see an owner. One pelvic wing, part of the rib ribcage. Keep going, Hall said. He felt something bursting up beside him, something lunatic and dark with colors. You're going to break before I do, Mr. Foreman, so help me God. They locked up past the bones. The rats were crowding. The rats were not crowding them. Their distances appeared constant. Constant, sorry. Up ahead hall, someone to the cross their path of travel. Shadows hit it, but he caught sight of a pink, twitching tail as thick as a telephone cord. <coughs> Sorry about that. This is the Varney of the Vampire. CR, the Feast of Blood. Or, or the Feast of Blood. Their distance appeared inconsistent or constant. Up ahead, Hall, someone of a cross or path of trouble. Shadows hit it. But he caught sight of the pink twitching tail as thick as a telephone cord. Up ahead, the throwing rose sharply. Then dipped. Hall could hear a stealthy, rustling sound. A bit sound. <coughs> trying to get rid of my cost, but it's not it's not even easy. <coughs> pardon me. 
something that perhaps no living man had ever seen. He cured to haul, but he has perhaps been looking for something that like this fruit all his days of crazy wandering. The rats were moving in, creeping on their bullies, bellies, creeping on their uh, bellies, forcing them to ford. Look, Harlick said coldly. Hall saw something had happened to the rats back there. Some hideous mutation had never cut the had survived under the eye <coughs> of the sun. It had never could have survived under the eye of the sun. Nature had forbidden it, but down there, or down here, nature had taken another ghastly face. The rats were gigantic, some as high as three feet, but their rear eggs were gone as they were blind as moles. Like their flying cousins, they dragged themselves forward with hideous eagerness. Warlock turned in, face hall, the smiling. <coughs> Sorry, the, sm the smile hanging on by a brute willpower, Hall had really had to. I'm him. We can't go on, Hall. You must see that. The rats have business with you, I think, Hall said. Warlock's control slipped. Please, he said, please. Hall smiled. Keep going. Warlock was looking over his shoulder. They're gnawing into the hose. When you get through it, we'll never get back. I know. Keep going. <coughs> My apologies. I might take some medicine too. You're insane. A rat ran across Warlock's shoe and he screamed, Hall smiled and gestured with his light. They were all around, the closest of them, less than a foot away now. Warlock began to walk again. The rats drew back. They topped the miniature rise and looked down. Warlock reached it first, and Hall in the face go white as a paper. Spit ran down his chin. Oh my god, dear Jesus. And he turned to run. Hall opened a nozzle of the hose and high pressure the water struck. Water squarely on his chest, knocking him back out of sight. There was a long scream that rose over the sound of the water, trashing stones. Hall! Grunts. A huge tempereous squeaking that seemed to fill the earth. Hall, for God's sake! A sudden and went ripping noise. A never scream weaker. Something huge shifted and turned. Quite distinctly, Hall heard a wet snap that a fractured bone makes. A legless rat, guided by some bastard in some form of a sun, lunged against him, biting its body was flabby, warm, almost absently. Hall turned the hose on it. <coughs> Knocking it away, the host did not have quite so much pressure now. Hall walked to the bro of the wet hill and looked down. The rat filled the whole gully at the far end of a no noxious tom. It was a huge and pulsating gray, eyeless, totally without legs. When Hall's light struck to it, it made a hideous and mewling noise. For queen, then the mag ma magna water matter. The magma matter. <laughs> there was some water around there. A huge and nameless thing whose progeny might someday develop wings. It seemed to be to dwarf what remained the Warwick. So that was probably just an illusion. It was just a shock of seeing rats as big as a Holstein cow. Tough. Get by, Warwick. <gasps> My fault, Hall said. <laughs> Sorry. The rat crouched over Mr. Fortman jealously, ripping at one lip arm. Hall turned away and began to make his way back rapidly. Halting the hats with his hose, which was growing less and less potent. 
Some of them got through and tacked his legs about the tops of his boots with biting lunges. Lung hung stubbornly, one at his, on at his thigh, ripping the cloth of his con corduroy pants. Hall made a fist and smashed it inside. He was nearly three quarters of the way back, and when a huge wiring filled the darkness, he looked up at the gigantic flying form smashed into his face. The mutated bat has not lost her tails yet. It whipped around Hall's neck in, in the loathsome coil and squeezed as the teeth saw it, the soft spot under his neck. <coughs> it wriggled and flapped with its membranous, membranous wings. It wriggled and flapped in membranous wings, clutching the tatters of his shirt and for purchase. Hall broke the nozzle of the ho hose up blindly and struck at its yelling body again and again. It fell away and he trampled it beneath its feet. <coughs> Pardon me. Dimly aware that he was screaming, the rats ran into blood over his feet, up his legs. He broke into a staggering run, shaking some off the other spit out of his belly, his chest. One ran up to his shoulder and pressed his question, questioning muzzle into the cup of his ear. He ran to his second bat. It roosted on his head for a moment, squealing, and it ripped away a flap of Hall's scalp. He held his body, growing numb. He felt his body is growing numb, like, all numb. Just like your teeth is actually numb, but this is more different. His ears filled with a discreet and yammer of many rats. He gave one last heave, stumbled over furry bodies, fell to his knees. He began to laugh and high. Magna Mater, Latin for Great Mother, Magna Mater was a great fertility goddess of ancient Phrygia and Asia Minor, counterpart of Greek goddess Rhea and Roman goddess Ops. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon. <clears throat> Pardon me. He began to laugh a high screaming sound. Holstein calf, a young dairy cow, which makes up 90 percent of the dairy herds used in the use herds in about US today. A newborn calf weighs ninety pounds. It will consume 50 pounds of food each day until it gets to be about uh, uh, 1,400 pounds. Yeah, he began to laugh a screaming sound, a very high screaming sound. Is that it? This is a guy kind of drowning a little bit because the rats were attacking him. 5 a.m. first day. Somebody better go down there, Brachi said tentatively. Not me, Winskinski whispered. Not me. No, not you, Jelly Belly. A pest in sitter of contempt. Let's go, Brogan said. Bringing up another hose. Me, Ebiston, Dangerfield. Or Dangerfield. Ebiston, Dangerfield, Nadeo, Stevenson. Go up to the office and get a few more lights. The pest aide looked down into the darkness thoughtfully. Maybe they stopped for a smoke, he said. A few rats. What the hell? Stevenson came back with the lights. A few moments later, they started down. Um, I think I recorded, uh, I'm not really sure. Um, do you guys have any questions about the, the full story about this? Um, okay, so, um, like, uh, if you guys have any questions about the video, just let me know, and I'll be, I'll be, I'll be able to answer your questions right away. Um, there's, like, questions that I read already, so, um, <clears throat> K 
Okay, so I'm going to be uh, reading this in a different part previously. Um, so this is a newsletter, so... This is a counseling center's newsletter, so... This is a newsletter, Counseling Center Corner, which, which is from my school. Counseling Center Corner, updates for your counselors, stop and look at your insulin learning messages. Counseling Center, CM Bulldogs. If you guys live around me, you can click on this link. The school I go to is BCSC. Show me the money. Click here to sign up. That's sign up for show me the money. Click here. Virtual tours links. Welcome to the CNS Counseling Office. Sent to tour. Welcome to CNS tour by Senior Margaret Maurer. Sorry. <laughs> this was the virtual open house. Check your check to see if your counselor changed. Um, okay, so this is this is this uh, Mrs. Sandley Freshour, which is um A through F O. Mr. Seth Ragsdale is which is from L M to R O G. MJ Shireman, FP to LL, Emily Tucker, ROH, and Z. My counselor is way different because I have Mr. Parrington as my counselor. <coughs> I have Mr. Parrington. I'm in a special education called Oration. That's where I am. Um, we were both, my, me and my friend were both in it, so... But for me, I have a different, I have a different resource than her. It's okay. I can still like visit her whenever she needs help. So I have Mr. Uh, Pemberton as my counselor. I had him since uh, freshman year. They'll be a freshman year for a senior year. So, um, and I'll read the rest of it through. It has like 13 slides or 13 pages. Sorry. And I'll be saving up for a part 51, so stay, stay tuned.